Okay, so at this point we're logged into Outlook Web Access as the scheduler account. And again, whoever the individual is that handles the scheduling, they would have the scheduler account. You don't have to actually create an account called scheduler. It's just this is an example of how you would give permissions over to someone and then they would have access to the resource mailbox and the calendar for the resource mailbox that you've created. So here we are, we have scheduler, we have our mail, but we don't see the resource mailbox. Well, in order to accomplish this from Outlook Web Access, we would go up to here, scheduler, we click the little drop down arrow, and it says open other mailbox, select mailbox. So in this case, we're going to type the name of the resource mailbox, and click open. Because it's the first time we're opening this in Outlook Web Access, it just confirms a couple of settings. We say OK. And now you can see that Scheduler here has their mailbox, but they're able to also access and work with Conference Room 1. Being that this individual has permissions over this resource mailbox, one of the things you might want to do is make some changes to it. So if you click Options, you'll note there are Calendar Options. And here you can determine the days of the week that a certain resource can be made available to others. You can make changes to when that resource is available. Let's say you wanted it available on Saturday and Sunday. It's a conference room. So maybe you want to establish a schedule that includes Saturday and Sunday. You can do that. And there's some automatic calendar processing and so forth. You'll also notice that there's an option down here called resource settings. We're going to discuss the various settings in a future lesson. But you can see that a resource mailbox certainly has quite a bit that you can configure once you have the permissions to do so. So we hope you found this informative, and we'll see you in the next lesson.